Our last lecture for chapter 8 is 8.2, the distribution of the sample proportion. Um, chapter 8 is a very short chapter, and um, so let's finish her up. Our first objective is to describe the sampling distribution of a sample proportion. Suppose we have a random sample of size n. Um, it's obtained from a population in which each individual either does or does not have a certain characteristic. The sample proportion, denoted p hat, is given by um, p hat equals the data value over n, where x is the number of individuals in the sample with the specific characteristic, and n, of course, is the total number of samples taken. The sample proportion p hat is a statistic that estimates the population proportion um, p. So let's look at an example. The Harris Poll conducted a survey of 1,200 adult Americans who vacationed during the summer and asked whether the individuals planned to work while on summer vacation. Of those surveyed, 552 indicated that they planned to work while on vacation. Find the sample population of individuals surveyed who planned to work while on summer vacation. So um, we substitute x equals 552. That's the number of people that responded to the specific characteristic of working during vacation. And our sample size was 1,200. So p hat equals um, 552 over 1,200, which is um, 0 0.46. This is the sample proportion. You might think of it like 46% of the individuals plan on working during summer vacation. Let's look at another example. Based on a study conducted by the Gallup organization, 76% of Americans believe that the state of moral values in the United States is getting worse. Describe the sampling distribution of the sample proportion for samples of size A, n equals 10, B, n equals 25, and n equals 60. The figure shows partial output from StatCrunch. Row 1 contains the first sample where the results of the survey are 1 believe or 0 don't believe. The mean number of successes believe that is the sample proportion from the first sample of n equals 10 is equal to 0 0.07, which you can see in the last column here. So all we're doing is counting up the total number of people who believe um, that the moral values are getting worse, and then, of course, in this case, divide by n, which is 10, okay? And so you can see you're going to have different um, proportions to, for each sample. Figure A shows the histogram of the 2,000 sample proportions from, column, from the column p hat. Notice that the shape of the distribution is skewed left. The mean of the 2,000 sample proportions is 0 0.76 and the standard deviation is 0 0.136. Notice that the mean of the sample proportions equals the population proportion. Figure B shows the histogram for 2,000 sample proportions for sample sizes for samples of size n equals 25. So each row now would have 25 entries in it. Notice that the Instagram is still skewed um, slightly left, although not as skewed as the last graph where we only had um, a sample size of 10. The mean of the 2000 sample proportions for a sample of size n equals 25 is 0.76 and the standard deviation is 0.08. And figure C shows the histogram for 2,000 sample proportions when we increase the sample size to 60. Here we notice that the sample, the histogram now is approximately normal, the normalized shape. The mean is 0.76 and the standard deviation is 0.054. So what can we take um, from our observations of the different calculations based upon a sample size of 10, 25, and 60. 
First, regarding the shape. As the size of the sample increases, the shape of the distribution of the sample proportion becomes approximately normal. And this is something that we learned before, the, the principle of central um, tendency, I believe, from the last section. The center, the mean of the distribution of the sample proportion equals the population proportion on all of these. And the standard deviation of the distribution of the sample proportion decreases, decreases as the sample size increases. So let's look at the sampling distribution of p-hat. For a simple random size, sample of size n with a population proportion p, the shape of the sampling distribution of p-hat is approximately normal provided n times p times the quantity 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10. What we're doing now is figuring out the size of the sample we need um, to kind of normalize the distribution shape so that we can use it for probabilities. The mean of the sampling distribution of p hat is mu sub p hat, which is equal to the population proportion p. And finally, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat is sigma sub p hat, and this is equal to the square root of p um, times the quantity of 1 minus p. Remember, p is the population proportion all over n. If you do some of the math here, basically what this is saying is the sample size cannot be more than 5% of the population size without somehow skewing the data. Okay, The sample size cannot be more than 5% of the population size without skewing the data. So let's look at an example. Suppose the pop proportion of Americans who believe that the state of moral values in the United States is getting worse is 0.76. This is based on a study conducted by the Gallup organization. <clears throat> Suppose we obtain a simple random sample of n equals 60. Americans and, de and determine which believe that the state of the moral values in the United States is getting worse. Describe the sampling distribution of the sample proportion for Americans with this belief. Since the population of America is um, more than 300 million, a sample size of 60 will certainly be um, less than 5% of that, right? We're talking millions of people would be 5%. So 60 is well below the 5% threshold. <clears throat> and we can see here, if we do the calculation, um, that we do have um, a value greater than 10 for n times p times the quantity of 1 minus p, which is that um, distribution thing we were just looking at, the rules of distribution for uh, sample size. The distribution of p hat is approximately normal with the mean mu sub p equals 0.76. Remember, it's the mean is equal to the proportion, and that was given to us in the problem, 0.76. And the standard deviation using the calculation, as you can see it here, is 0 0.055. The sampling distribution of the sample proportion may be used to compute probabilities involving the sample proportions. So first what we have to do is make sure that the data was obtained randomly, then determine whether the sampling distribution is approximately normal but by verifying that the sample size is less than 5% of the population and that NP times 1 minus P is greater than or equal to 10. Then we use the normal distribution to determine the probabilities, the area under the curve, if you remember. So let's look at a, our final problem. Compute, um, according to the National Center for Health Statistics, 15% of all Americans have hearing trouble. In a random sample of 120 Americans, what is the probability at most 12% have hearing trouble? Suppose that a random sample of 120 Americans who regularly listen to music using headphones results in 26 having hearing trouble 
what might you conclude? So let's look at the part A first. In a random sample, what is the probability, a random sample of 120 Americans, what's the probability at most 12% have hearing trouble? The data was um, obtained by a random sample. It even says that in a random sample. Again, there are 300 million Americans, so 120 is well below the 5% threshold. And our calculation gives us a, a, um, a calculation greater than or equal to 10, okay, for the shape of the distribution. So um, our shape of the distribution is approximately normal. So we can look at the normalized curve here with mu equal 0.15, the mean. And what we're looking for is the probability um, at most 12%. So we're looking at uh, 12 or below. So we're looking for the area in the normal curve because remember the area of the normal curve is also the probability of that value of 12% or less. Okay, uh, or less, right? It's the area of the curve to the left of that data point, 0.12. And again, that area represents um, the probability or the proportion of people um, that have that characteristic, in this case, hearing trouble, um, which is also the probability um, of selecting a random person and having them have that characteristic. The mean of the distribution of the sample proportion is um, equal to P, which was the was given in the problem, right? 15% of all Americans have here in trouble. That's the proportion, P. And we can calculate um, the standard deviation by plugging in the values, um, et cetera, okay? The figure shows the normal curve with the area to the left of 0.12 shaded, and that's what we're going to try to find. To find this area by hand, we have to convert the p hat value 0.12 to a z-score. Remember how to do this. It's simply the data point, which in this case represents p hat, minus the mean over um, the standard deviation. And these, are, of course, are all related specifically to that variable, so the mean of the p hat and the standard deviation of the p hat. Plugging those in, we get negative 0.92. Now remember what we do with this negative 0.92 is we go to table 5 and we find the um, value in the table that corresponds to the z-score of 0.92 and we get a value of 0.1788. Remember this area, so the area is equal to 0.1788 the area under the whole curve is equal to 1. So this is basically 18% of the entire population, 18. And remember that area is also equivalent to the probability um, for um, someone being in that area. So the probability is 18% or 0.18, um, as is the area if we round to two decimal places. Okay. So the probability uh, at most, well, hold on, this is the probability that um, someone has a, um, no, that's correct. This is the probability that someone um, has at most 12% because this is all of the ones below it, so it's going to be 18%, okay? The probability that a random sample of n equals 120 Americans results in at most 12% having hearing trouble is approximately 0.18. This means that about 18 out of 100 or 18% uh, random samples of size 120 will result in at most 12% having hearing trouble if the population proportion of Americans with hearing trouble is 0.15. So it's giving you all the rest, but we're just saying that um, the probability is 18% um, that 12, it's kind of confusing. This probability is 18% that 12% of the 120 Americans will have a hearing trouble. It's like a complex probability, a probability inside of a probability. Okay. So now let's look at part B.
Suppose that a random sample of 120 Americans who regularly listen to music using headphones results in 26 having um, hearing trouble. What might you conclude? Well, the sample proportion, again, is the number of people with the characteristic over the number in the sample, so we get 0.217. We want to know if obtaining a sample proportion of 0.217 from a population whose proportion is assumed to be 0.15 is unusual. So we need to compute um, the probability of p hat being greater than 0.217. So because if a sample proportion of 0.217 is unusual, then any sample proportion more than 0.217 is also unusual. The figure down here shows that the area to the right of 0.217 um, it shows that area is shaded, which will represent um, the probability and the area of um, p hat being greater than or equal to 0.217. So again, what we need to do to calculate this area is to um, turn these values into a z-score, okay? And when we plug in those numbers, p hat minus mu sub p hat um, divided by sigma sub p hat, we get 2.06, 2.06, okay? The area under the standard curve to the right of z equals 2.06 is 0 0.0197, which we found in table five. This is also the probability of p hat being greater than um, 0.217. Uh, the text solution calculates a similar area of 0 0.0199. So it's very similar to 0.2, uh, what we got here in table five. So what we can include, conclude, this is the probability 0 0.0199, which is roughly two, 2%, 0.02, about two samples in 100 will result in sample proportion of um, 0.217 or more from a population whose proportion is 0.115. So we obtained a result that should only happen about two times in 100, so the results definitely are unusual. Remember that 2% is kind of our cutoff for outliers and unusual events. So we could make two conclusions from this. The population proportion of Americans with hearing trouble who regularly listen to music using headphones is 0.15. And we just happen to randomly select a higher proportion that have hearing trouble. Well, as you can see from prior examples, we don't usually kind of just say, oh, it's coincidence. Or the population proportion of Americans with hearing trouble who regularly listen to music using headphones is more than 0 0.15. Now remember that 0 0.15 is just all Americans with hearing trouble. So the second conclusion is more reasonable. We conclude that the proportion of Americans who regularly listen to music using headphones um, who have hearing trouble is going to be higher than the general population. Okay, so remember that in a lot of these calculations with probabilities, we're first creating the normal curve, the normal um, distribution, and then we can calculate z-scores, which give us an area to the left of um, that z-score. And I didn't mention it on the last slide, but notice we were looking for the area to the right. So when we found the the corresponding entry in table 5, we had to subtract that from 1 because table 5 shows the area to the left of a z-score. And here in the, last, in the last part of this, we wanted one greater than that. Okay, so we wanted the area to the right. I, I neglected to mention that. Okay, so this second conclusion is much more likely that people who listen to music on headphones have more hearing trouble than the general population.